All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And this one here is a quick hit. Uh, it's just going to be straight to the point, Lord's willing. All right, but hopefully edifying to those, all right, of the hopeful elect. And I just want to build uh, off the video here in which Elder Apostle Gabar did entitled, Who are the highest value males? Men. Okay, and who is these men? This would be the elect, all right, elect men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, because these are the men who the Lord is dealing with. And who will be saved. Alright. Those elect. Okay. The chosen. Within the chosen. Alright. That governing body of Yahweh Shai. Here in the earth. Today. Now. And also in, in the heavens. Alright. So. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the video. And there's a point Elder Apostle Gabar made. And I want to build from there. Alright. So let's go. And I buffeted. That's us who, uh, who are in this truth. You know, we're going through all kind of hell. Part of our hell is, is not being appealing to the women. Which, when you look at this, this society, the women in this society, they're, they're, they're trash, man. You know, real we had real women back then. We had virgins. We had women that had some kind of integrity. The women of today, come on, man. <laughs> That's all I could do is laugh, all right? That's all I could do is laugh. But... In the defense of you sisters out there that are trying to do the right thing, you're A-OK, -okay, all right? Just keep trying to do the right thing. The best thing you sisters can do is learn to be feminine and quiet, okay? And if you have a man in the Lord, a man of the Lord, you trust in that man of the Lord. Just like Sarah trusted in Abraham, all right? That's the best thing you can do. And if you, you women that are out there that don't have a man, you should consider getting a man in the faith, all right? You got to put put away your pride and you got to put away your your whorish ways. You, you can't. It's, this is not a thing of you come into this and you're going to be monkey branching. You know what monkey branching is? If you don't know, you should look it up. <laughs> you're going to be monkey branching from man to man. This, this no. Nah, yeah. And I just want to say something on that point. You know, these women uh, carried the uh, old man spirit. You know, it's written in the scriptures. They didn't put off the old man. So they stage themselves as something holy, but really they they are nothing but ravishing wolves. You know, they're demons, all right? Degen, demons, you know, legions, you know, full of demons. And in their mind, these wicked women think that they can jump from man to man. Well, you're going to be sadly mistaken. You're going to be destroyed in the end. You can't jump from, from a man of the Lord to a man of the Lord to a man of the Lord to a man of the Lord. You know, you're going to be held accountable for that. So, um, you know, the point was made that he that he made mention. It was the point of when Apostle Bar said, you know, these women, you know, you women out there, you know, that's striving, you know, in, in this truth. You know, you can't be prideful and whorish. Let me uh, take it back. Consider getting a man in the faith. All right. You got to put put away your pride and you got to put away your your whorish ways. You, you can't. It's, this is not a thing of you come into this and you're going to be monkey branching. You know what monkey branching is? If you don't know, you should look it up. <laughs> you're going to be monkey branching from man to man. This, this, no, nah, we don't tolerate that in this thing of ours. You get a man. That's it. You're supposed to be with that man, period. OK. See, you see that? You, you hear that? All right. Now, now I want to build from what Apostle Bar said, uh, you know, you women, you know, you can't be prideful and uh, and also being of your of horse ways. All right. And uh, I was doing a little, uh, you know, just just uh, digging in words and looking up words. And, uh, you know, it brought me to this scripture here, which is in Titus, the second chapter. Uh, before I read this, let me uh, get another quick scripture. Get another one. This came in mind just now. So, uh, let's 
see. Okay, Ephesians 5 and 24. All right, this is Ephesians 5 and 24. And, you know, I, yeah, I start at verse, verse 20, verse 22, verse 21. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Yahweh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. All right. And that just also uh, also shows you that a woman to be delivered, you're going to have to be with a man of the Lord. All right. Because Yahweh Shai is the savior of that body. As also Yahweh Shai spoke about being of one twine. You know, today we're rehearsing righteous acts, you know, and, um, you know, women repenting from their whorish ways. All right. When you're dealing with a man of the Lord. You know, that's who you with. That's it. You know, there's no leaving, getting with another brother after four years and these this time and five years or two years and thinking you could just start all over. All right. It don't work that way. You're supposed to be rehearsing. Once you wake up to this truth and you acknowledge your sins, guess what? You go back into them sins. You are held accountable. All right. You're held accountable. So anyway, it says for the husband is the head of the wife even as Yahweh is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Yahweh which subject means what? Under the rule. It says, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Let me read that again. Therefore, as the church is subject under the rule unto Yahweh so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And it literally means that in everything. All right. If a man with a man of the Lord, of course, his decisions and judgments and things he tell you to do is all in righteousness. OK, you know, um, let me see. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. All right. So I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, women uh, have that pride, but Let's get to the top. Let's get to the main topic here in which certain words I looked up here in Titus, the second chapter. All right. Because you women supposed to be behaviors as become of holiness. All right. You know, and uh, we're going to get it. Let's read Titus two and one. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. OK. It says that the age man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity and patient. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. You know, you got a lot of women on that social media. They claim to be teachers, but really they be venting, you know, off of their demons and, uh, you know, using the scriptures to, uh, you know, uh, uh, come against their own husband. You know, you know, people be showing me a lot of things and. You know, and and it's it's off, man. You know, all right. So anyway, it says the age woman likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Now, key words: behavior as becometh holiness. Now, the word holy means separate, so that means you're separate from the world. Okay, you're not a nigger woman no more. You're not this black Latino woman. You're not supposed to be vibrating in that spirit. You know, saying, "Oh, I'm Latina." You know. I'm feisty, you know, and you think you got to pass to be a snapping turtle, you know, or to be a demon. Doesn't work that way. You're supposed to behave as becometh holiness. It says not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. It says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Verse five, to be discreet, chaste. Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh be not blasphemy. All right, which the word blasphemy means to, to be speaking evil of. Okay, so it says to be discreet. Now, this is when I started doing the digging. All right, the word discreet here, you know, I never looked it up this way, but through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, he gave me more understanding, you know, and, and I'm hoping to uh, give understanding to. 
you know, the Lord's elect, hopeful elect, all right? And uh, you few women out there that do watch and uh, being in the right spirit, you know, and learning, you know, this is important for you to learn this and practice it, you know, and let it become, you know, just second nature, you know, without a thought. You know, uh, these women today are not groomed in the fashion of being a, a lady. They're groomed to being a monster. And you got to come out of that. All right. Uh, this is uh, discreet. Strong's G, 4998. Sofro. Sofro. All right. Now it says, of a sound mind, sane, and one senses, curbing one's desires and impulses, self-control, temperate. All right, now it says of a sound mind. Now I did, like I said again, um, I had dig some digging and I got, you know, to me the best definition for this sound mind here was in business dictionary, you know, so I wrote it in my notes. Now here we go, it says sound mind, right? It says legally having the capacity to think reason and understand for oneself it says adults by nature are considered in general to be in sound mind and that's true because even paul said when he was a child he thought as a child and when he became an adult he thought what as an adult all right roughly paraphrasing meaning that when you become an adult you know you take on responsibility so what happens is you have to what reason with decisions you make and your actions. OK, so it says legally having the capacity to think you're supposed to think right reason. Who do you reason with? You reason with your with your husband. OK, you reason with your man. All right. It says and understand for oneself. Adults by nature are considered in general to be in sound mind. All right. Because if you got to go to a job. The next day and you got to be there by seven in the morning what you're going to do you're going to reason you're going to understand for oneself you're going to you're going to uh having com the capacity to think upon what you need to do you got to eat what you got to go to bed you got to go to bed a certain time because you want to get up and be on time for the job that's being what in a sound mind it says but through certain circumstances can be rendered as being not in sound mind due to intensive brain damage or other major incapacity. And that's definitely what two thirds of these women are in the world of our people. They have brain damage, you know, they're, they're dysfunctional, they messed up, they're damaged, you know, so damaged that they can't even re -repa be repaired. You just gotta get away from them, you know? Now it says due to intensive brain damage <laughs> or other major, major incapacities, Sound mind is considered a legal requirement before writing or signing most legal documents, including a will. And that's true because when you're about to sign your name on something, what you do, you reason, you give thought to what you're doing to see whether to do it or not. All right. So that's sound mind. So let's go back to the word discreet here. It says of a sound mind, sane. All right. You want to be sane in one senses. It says curbing one's desire and impulses, self-control, temperate. Now, I look this word curbing up, right? Now, this is the important word. This is the highlight of the lesson here. And I went to the etymology to curb. Now, it says strap passing under the jaw of a horse attached to the bit of the bridle and used to restrain the animal. All right. So if you have a horse. You will attach this strap to the horse's jaw, all right, so that he will curve for you. He will curb for you. If you turn his head with this strap, he will turn with you. If I turn right, he go right. If I turn left, he go left. All right, he will follow me. All right, that's what curb means. It says um, curb on a horse, curvus, uh, to bend, all right. So curb means to do what? Bend. Women have to learn to curb their desires, to turn, bend, all right? Yeah, all right, so curb means to bend, you know? All right, if you're a righteous woman and believing, 
believe in Yahweh Bashem Shai, and you fear Yahweh Bashem Shai, and do as is what the scriptures say, and endure. The word discreet means what? Of a sound mind, saying of one senses, okay? Curbing one's desires and impulses. You know, a woman may have a desire to do something, but then, you, you know, your husband say, or you may, the man will say, no, we're not doing that. And right off the bat, you know, women get upset because they don't get their way. Because they will not curb their desires. All right? The Lord said that you are, are, are underneath the man. All right? And Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. You have the Heavenly Father. You have Yahweh Shai. You have the man of the Lord. And then you have, you have the woman. It's easy to understand. It's order. It says self-control. This is what you have to have instead of running off at your mouth. You know, you could be pissed off at something and you could be actually, uh, you know, uh, what the scriptures say, um, righteously mad. But as a woman, you have to keep self-control. Okay. Now, like I said, let me just see what this means. Temperate. Ooh, uh, relating to or denoting of a region, a climate. Now, we don't want that one. Now, verse uh, number two, it says showing moderation or self-restraint. Okay. You got a lot of forward, forward thinking women. Okay. Bold, proud, boasters. You know, our women are like pit bulls. They bark. You know, just the other day, I was at the gas station and the hand might, you know, that was pumping the gas. He could be Israel. Well, the guy he was talking to could be Israel. And, you know, the black woman, you were her dude in the car, because he was talking and taking a little long to get to her, yo, you should have heard the mouth on this dog. You know? Motherfucker! Get y'all don't give a fuck who your name is. I said, what the hell? Like a dude, literally yelling like a dude, straight hood booger. You know? And then the guy, her, her man in the passenger seat, all he was looking for was the work. He was looking at the, the hand mic, the guy that pumped the gas, to see if he had an attitude or see if he was going to say something slick to his woman because he was going to get out the car. You know, that, I was like, that's curse right there. You know, that's they, both of them made for each other, man. Niggas, man. But, um, you know, that's that. So let's go back. You know, I wanted to make this a quick hit, but it's probably not going to be. All right. Um... Now it says to be discreet, chaste. All right, let's look that up. Chaste. Uh. Strong's G53, Hognos. Hognos. It says exciting, reverence, vulnerable, sacred, pure. Okay, to be chaste, to be do what? To be pure, pure from carnality, chaste, modest, pure from every fault, immaculate, clean. You know, if you become holiness, your behavior become holiness, you become what? Clean. You know, Lord, wash away your sins and your ignorant ways, you know, your self ways, you know, your own self ways. You curb yourself in righteousness, you know. Because you fear Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and your husband. You know? So let's say it says to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home. That speaks for itself. Good, obedient to their own husbands. That word there is obedient. You know? Obedient. To arrange under. Subordinate. Uh, to subject. Put in subjection. To subject oneself, obey. So you have to obey the rule. It says to submit to one's control. To yield to one's admonition or advice. To obey, be subject. To arrange in a military fashion under the command or leader. Yeah. Okay, be subject. Right. And we, we that's, you know, that's speaks for itself, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh be not blasphemy. And like I said, this word blasphemy 
if I didn't say, but the word blasphemy means to speak evil of, right? Blasphemy. It says to speak reproachfully, rail at, revel, uh, to be, oh, here we go. To be evil spoken of, revel, revel at, blasphemy, right? Blasphemy, speaking blasphemy, speaking evil of, you know, and that's the point. So I hope this lesson was edifying because uh, women eventually are going to do this, you know, you know, in the end, because, you know, with Isaiah 4 and 1, because of fear of dying and the fear of being destroyed. All right, because the, the most imp the important part is that you fear your Hashem Yahweh Shai. If you don't fear your Hashem Yahweh Shai, you're done. Uh, this is Isaiah four and one, and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, "We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. All right, to take away their sins." So, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom.